Well, hello, welcome to the VK6 CS Amateur Radio Channel. Here's the FT450, the trusty FT450. And yeah, let's just set this. I'm using the. Uh, I'm using the um, a radio radio test set to generate. Not focusing on that. It's very me that's out of focus. Um, to generate some RF, I'm just going to set the level, the receive signal strength. So it's S5. There we go. Okay, so it's S5 with the tuner on bypass. So um, that's uh, the radio test set is connected to the amplifier output, what would be the antenna socket. As you'll see, the uh, it's not on standby. The amplifier is de-keyed which means the RF will go straight through the relay inside this amplifier into the little tuner and then into the radio. So, does the radio, uh, sorry, does the tuner put much attenuation in? So, this is all tuned, so if I press the PTT um, it will transmit. It's tuned to match the input of the amplifier. I'll just uh, put the tuner in circuit you can see that the signal's dropped, not by very much, but it has it has put some attenuation in there. It actually sounds worse than it looks. I mean, I've listened to the guys and I've, I've bypassed that tuner and they've sounded better. Looking at it like that, um, can I do this while I'm holding the camera? Is it going to be too wobbly? We'll see. Okay, so between between 3 and 5, that middle dot there is going to be S4. So between S4 and S5 is 6 dB. So the little dot in the middle there is going to be 3 dB. Okay. So it's probably dropped a couple of dB, maybe uh, maybe even 3 dB by having that in line. So if I press the bypass switch again, like that, that goes back up to S5. So that's with the that's with the tuner bypassed, and that's with the tuner in circuit on 40 meters. So we're probably getting two to three dB loss uh, through the little tuner on the receive path. Is it going to focus? Yeah, it is. Bye. Um, okay. Well, uh, unfortunately, this bucket of garbage camera doesn't have a pause function on it, so. Even though I when I press the when I press the button it says pause, it starts a new file when I when I press it again. So um, let's see if I can do this. I'll go down to there, 3605, and then put the right frequency in the radio test set. Uh, no, that's not the right frequency. <laughs> What's wrong with this bloody thing? This must be me. Hang on, 3.604. Zero. There we go. Guess it's a lower sideband. Uh, and then retune the tuner. So that's going to be E. Uh, for that one's set in the workplace, and that one needs to come around to there. So there, the uh, there they are the settings to match the input impedance on 80 meters. Okay, let's take the thing out of circuit. And again, let's set the signal strength to S5. Let's take the string to S5, go the other way maybe. There we go. Right. Now I connect, now I put the tuner in line. Huh. Now, in the right mode. There we go. <laughs> well, this is amateur radio, as I've said on uh, quite a few videos. Right, so that bypassed. 
adjust the signal level. Whoa. There we go. Put it in circuit. Yeah, that makes no difference. That's really weird. So I can't see any difference there. Now, it would be better to do it with something other than a sort of bar graph type S meter, because I suspect it probably did drop a little bit. Certainly, if I listen to the guys, it sounds like it drops a bit, but I can't see it there. So, on 80 meters, no noticeable difference. On 40 meters, 2 to 3 dB. And I suspect that it probably gets worse the higher in frequency I go. I won't go through all the bands, because I haven't made a note of the settings for the other bands. Um, so, with regard attenuation through the tuner that matches the drive radio to the old valve linear amplifier, on 80 meters it seems to make very little difference whether it's in or out, which is good, which means I can just key the amplifier and listen to the guys without much in the way of attenuation. Uh, on 40 meters the attenuation is a little more significant, but you know, you know it's probably um, half an S point if that. So. Um, it may not be too bad just to leave that in there. Um, I, I still want to uh, get rid of that if I can, um, improve the matching to the amplifier without using a tuner, so that um, when I press the PTT on the drive radio, uh, the anode current doesn't go through the roof and it still gives me the same output power, because uh, all that was doing by um, by having lots more anode current, it's got a lot more uh, input power to the amplifier, but the same amount of power was coming out, so the, uh, the poor old valves had to dissipate a lot more power in the way of, uh, of heat. Um, so, uh, you know, getting, uh, having an anode current of 700 milliamps and still getting 500 watts out of it is a much better way to go. Um, I think the specification for these old valve amps is something like uh, 600 watts maximum. So, under efficient driving conditions, um, I can probably get 900 milliamps of anode current, which is what it says is a maximum, and maybe 650 watts or 600 watts out of it. So, you know, 500 watts out for 700 milliamps anode current. Um, that's probably pretty good. Uh, if I had a calculator, I could uh, work that out. I think it drops to about 1100 volts. So, those of you with quick minds or calculators can calculate the input power and um, you saw 500 watts coming out of it so that's the the difference between the two is what the poor old valves have to dissipate as heat now i was using it in fm mode uh, for just for ease of um, demonstration really um, under normal use when it's in ssb mode um, you know, pushing those, that, that kind of power through them for shut for such short periods of time like on the voice peaks uh, wouldn't bother them at all all right well uh as always, thanks for watching. Hope you found that interesting. Catch you next time.